Apache Sedona is an open source framework for working with large scale geospatial data. It adds spatial functionality to distributed data processing frameworks like Apache Spark and Apache Flink to enable developers and data scientists to work with geospatial data at scale. Apache Sedona exposes native types for representing complex geometries like points, lines, polygons, and implements geospatial indexing and partitioning for fast lookups and efficient distributed processing of spatial data at scale. Geospatial querying functionality is available with Spatial SQL by implementing the SQL MM3 and OGC SQL standards. We can work with Apache Sedona with Python, R, Spatial SQL, and other tooling such as Jupyter Notebook environments and with seamless integration with the PyData ecosystem. There are many ways to leverage Apache Sedona, whether incorporating into an existing data pipeline or building a new greenfield analytics application. For example, Apache Sedona can be deployed into a Databricks cluster, run in AWS's EMR, it works with Snowflake, or we can run it on our own infrastructure. In this video, we'll be using the Apache Sedona Docker image to get a cluster running locally and perform some basic geoprocessing tasks. Now I've started a Docker container locally. I'll show you the Docker commands that I ran. Uh, first, I pulled down the latest tag of the Apache Sedona Docker image. And then to run the container, uh, first I bound a few ports one is 8888. That's the port that our Jupyter Notebook environment will run on. So this binds the uh, containers port to our local machine. So I can access that in the web browser. These other ports expose the web UIs for our Spark cluster. I also mounted a volume. So this basically maps a folder on my local machine, Geodata where I have some shapefiles stored to a folder in the container that I'll want to be able to read and write from. Uh, and then we are working with, again, just the latest version of Apache Sedona. Once we run the Docker container and open the Jupyter environment at localhost 8888, uh, we'll see that there are several Jupyter notebooks that ship with the Apache Sedona Docker image. I won't go through all of these, but let's touch on a few interesting points in a few of these notebooks, because it does show different ways that we can interact with Sedona, different things that we can accomplish. So the first notebook we'll look at is Apache Sedona Core. There are, as I said earlier, a couple of different ways of working with Apache Sedona. There is a core RDD API. Uh, we'll also work with Spatial SQL in a moment here. Now, one of the core features of Apache Sedona is introducing this concept of a spatial RDD. These are data structures that extend Spark's RDD or resilient distributed data, data set to make these RDDs spatially aware. And each of these uh, instances of an RDD has some geometry associated that with it when we create spatial RDDs. So here we're loading uh, point, polygon, line string, rectangle data, uh, and creating RD spatial RDDs for each of these. Another core feature of Sedona is spatial partitioning and spatial indexing. With spatial partitioning, we are efficiently distributing data across our cluster. We can use different indexes to do this. Uh, KDB tree, quad tree, and R tree are available for spatial partitioning in Apache Sedona. We create spatial indexes for efficient lookups of data. Uh, we can use quad trees and R trees in Sedona uh, as well. The rest of this Apache Sedona core notebook walks through how we can do things like spatial joins using this RDD uh, API, how we can read and write data, how we can convert these RDDs into say geopandas objects uh, and so on. 
The next notebook I want to look at is Apache Sedona SQL. So this is a look at using spatial SQL with Apache Sedona to work with spatial data. Uh, you'll see these st underscore functions like st point, st geometry from text, uh, and so on. These are part of the spatial SQL standards that describe how we can add spatial functionality to SQL uh, that Apache Sedona supports. So again, we can do things like spatial joins with spatial SQL. Uh, it's interesting to compare that to how we do those with the spatial RDD API. So far, we've just been working with vector data. We can also work with raster data in Apache Sedona. You'll find these functions rather than st underscore are typically rs underscore uh, standing for raster. So for example, here in this example, we're loading a geotiff and doing some map algebra for calculating something like NDVI, which is uh, a vegetative index for measuring health of land cover. So there are a lot of these map algebra spatial SQL functions that are available for working with raster data uh, and also functionality for visualizing and writing uh, our raster products back to uh, back to disk. And the final notebook that I want to take a look at before we start writing our own code here is working with the Overture Maps data. Now, Apache Sedona works with cloud-native geospatial data formats like GeoParquet. Uh, in fact, Wearabots has published a GeoParquet version of the Overture Maps data set, uh, which here we're pulling down from S3. We're then defining a spatial filter for the city of Bellevue. And we're using Spatial SQL to apply that filter, in this case, to the building data set from Overture Maps. So we're finding all buildings where the geometry of that building is fully contained within the polygon defining the city of Bellevue. Uh, and then we're using the Kepler GL integration with Apache Sedona to visualize these. And we can zoom in quite a bit to see all of the buildings in Bellevue. We can also do something similar with the places data set for points of interest. Uh, the one that I think is most interesting in the Overture Maps data set, though, is the transportation theme. So you haven't seen this. There's essentially two pieces to this data set. One are the connectors, which are kind of like the transit stops. And then the segments, which uh, are line or more complex geometries that represent uh, how those stops are connected, which we can visualize with the Kepler Sedona integration as well. Okay, well, let's create our own notebook. I'll create a new notebook. And the first thing we'll do here is I'm just going to paste in some initial setup code. So you don't have to watch me type that. Uh, but basically, we're going to import uh, some packages for working with Sedona. And we're going to connect to our local Spark cluster. Now, I've been working on uh, some projects with hydrology data. So I have uh, some shapefile data of river basins in North America. And what I'd like to do is read that shapefile, uh, take a look at it, and then I want to calculate the centroids and write that back as GeoJSON because I'm working with a different system uh, that doesn't support the polygon geometries that represent river basins, uh, but I still want to be able to represent those basins as point geometry. So we'll calculate the centroids for each and write that back as GeoJSON. So the first thing we're going to do is let's use the shapefile reader uh, to read to geometry RDD. So we're going to point this uh, at that geodata directory that I mounted earlier. And then once we have our now spatial RDD, let's convert that to 
uh, a data frame using the adapter. I'm calling this Hux. Uh, that's the I guess USGS maybe that refers to uh, to these as hydrological units. Uh, so we'll create our data frame, uh, and then once we have the data frame, let's uh, create a a view name. We'll just call these basins so we can reference later, uh, and then we can. Let's print the schema just to make sure we have the correct field. So we have uh, a geometry field for each of these, and then we have some other information uh, about each basin. Um, so these are the water basins for North America. The data came from the Hydro Sheds project, which I'll link in the comments. But basically, we want to know for, for every basin what is upstream, what is downstream, and, and you can see that's the, uh, the next sink uh, to figure out what is uh, downstream and upstream. Okay, so that's the schema. Uh, that's fine. Let, let's take a look at uh, the first 10 rows of our data. And so we can see the geometry. Uh, okay, we have polygons. Uh, we have information about the size of the geometry and then again a pointer to what is up what basin is upstream and downstream let's visualize this again using the sedona kepler integration uh, kepler gl allows us to visualize uh, large data sets it, it's hardware accelerated to visualize pretty large data sets uh, either in the browser or in this case within the Jupyter notebook environment. Uh, and so it's pretty neat. So this is, I think, uh, level four of the basins that we're looking at. Each of these basins can be subdivided into much, much smaller units um, all the way from level one to level 12. So we're, we're somewhere in the middle there. Great, so this is neat. I can see all of uh, the river basins in North America. What I wanna do now is calculate the centroid. So basically for each one of these features to look at the polygon geometry, calculate the centroid as a single point. And then I'd like to write that back as GeoJSON so that I can load that into a different system. Uh, so we'll say uh, centroids data frame is going to uh, be defined by a spatial SQL statement. So let's do select st centroid from our geometry column. Call that centroid. Uh, and then we'll bring through all the other uh, fields as well from our basins. Uh, and then let's just look at the first 10 rows. There we go. So we can see we now have our centroid geometry. We have uh, a point geometry to represent the centroids. And we brought through all of the other fields as well. So the final thing we want to do here is we want to uh, convert that centroids data frame to a spatial RDD. Uh, and the spatial RDD object that will have the uh, functionality for writing that as GeoJSON. So that'll pass in our centroids data frame, give that uh, a name, and then the central Centroid RDD has our save as GeoJSON functionality, which we will write back to that geodata directory uh, that we mapped from the container to our local machine. And now if I go in the geodata directory, if I look in the Huck Centroids, I have my GeoJSON file. We can see that uh, the way GeoJSON works is every uh, 
uh, every feature has a geometry associated with it and then properties. Um, so we have kind of two geometries here really because we brought through the polygon geometry, but that's just stored as an attribute. Uh, and we'll be able to read that into our other system as JSON. So that was a quick look at the Apache Sedona Docker image doing some basic geoprocessing steps. Um, there's a lot of interesting things going on in the world of Apache Sedona and Wearobots. If you want to learn more, uh, check out wearobots.ai or feel free to reach out to me directly. I'm will at wearobots.com. Uh, if you're using Apache Sedona today, I would love to know what you're working on. Uh, if you're thinking about it, I would love to chat and see if that is a tool that might make sense uh, for you to add to your toolbox. Thanks for watching. Cheers.